Hello and welcome to Coffee with Carrie. Thanks for being here for today's quick tip. Just one little quick tip if you're new. I'm Carrie, matchmaker, dating coach. Oh yeah, I've got my little graphic there. Today I wanted to share something that I learned recently. I thought it was interesting and you've probably seen the title. I don't think you wandered in here blindly, but it's a little bit about deal breakers and red flags and how we as daters often will say, you know what, one deal breaker, my clients say it all the time, one deal breaker and that's it for me, I'm out of here. Or too many red flags, you know, I see two red flags, I'm gone. And I think to myself, now that I know this little inside steady situation here, but are you really? That's the question we're gonna ask ourselves. And I'll share what I learned with you this week. If that's at all interesting, please don't go away. Stick around. On with the show. We all have deal breakers. Some of them are helpful. Some of them are detrimental to the dating process and being open to meeting a multitude of people to learn more about them. You know, I always said from the very beginning of being a matchmaker, I would say to clients, there are three reasons to not go on a second date you know, red flags, just too many red flags, a straight up deal breaker that somehow got past me because, you know, I can't learn everything about somebody when I'm screening them to see if they're a match with my client. And also the feeling of, yeah, we've talked about that before, that ick factor, right? If you feel about somebody, you're never going to recover from that and suddenly become attr madly attracted to them as you, you know, should be. So those were my three. But... I read the study that you would think that one deal breaker that got past me was going to be a literal deal breaker and make you not want to date this other person or get to know them on subsequent dates. But the study said, no, no, those deal breakers, they don't mean what you think they do. You know, as we get to know somebody, we obviously get to see more of the real them. Everybody seems to want to be on their very best behavior and present the very best version of themselves on a date. I think that's a bad idea, personally. I think keeping it real and being, you know, true to yourself is really important on a date because why waste anybody's time? So somebody left a comment last week about, oh, I guess I need to pretend I'm into sports and pretend like I like you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, why would you do that? You can have years with this person putting on sports on TV or wanting to get tickets somewhere and you're going to have to pretend forever. That doesn't seem logical to me or in your own best interest for sure. So tricking somebody is never something that I would recommend on a first date. So in that way, I mean, being true to who you are and being your real self. But I'm also not saying on a first date that you have to show every version of yourself. That would look a little crazy. And also, there are certain parts of ourselves that we don't really want to introduce somebody to until we get to know them a little better. I think there are many things um, that we have in our lives or about our situation that somebody has to earn the right to that story or to know this information about us. Somebody was asking about um, STDs the other day. And I said, well, no, I wouldn't lead with it. There are dating apps for people who, if you want to not ever have to have that conversation because it's a given, it's a known. But short of being on that dating app, meeting somebody in that situation, I would say, you know, you have to be honest with them before you get into an intimate relationship with them, but it's not something I would say put on your dating profile or something that you have to share with them on a first date. You don't even know if you guys like each other or if there's a huge deal breaker that pops up that's uh, for sure no for either direction. Either of you could figure out that this isn't going to work out for a major area, which brings us back to the fact that Couple red flags, couple deal breakers. Typically you think to yourself, I would totally be well on my way if this person did this or they thought that or they talked like this. I'm not gonna ever see them on a second date. But studies show that in reality, it's no more than four. No more than four red flags or deal breakers. Most people use those words interchangeably. They're a little different to me because I'm a matchmaker, I think. But four or more is a reason that you would walk away, never look back, and obviously never see this person again. But two or three that come up on a date, people typically, 
and you may be different, but statistically speaking, two or three deal breakers or red flags on a date for most people does not keep them from getting together with somebody if they had so much more to recommend them and the person enjoyed their company. We're such liars, right? <laughs> I mean, as we know, nobody is perfect. And as we get to know somebody better, we see more of their personality traits or their quirky things or the, the things about them that just make them super weird like we all have. But if you're one of those people who make a list of all your red flags and deal breakers like so many of my clients, why don't you just save yourself the time now and really pare it down to like one or two because they're not gonna make a difference for you in the long run anyway, if this study is right. And I do believe, I think I have an episode I did last uh, recently about being flexible and our deal breakers being flexible and trying to make be more flexible so that we open up the door to being able to meet more people who may be a match. And I know, despite the things that we think we don't want or our must have list of traits that we absolutely think are desirable in a partner and that uh, we're not going to give up on their must haves. That means they're must haves, right? Hint, it doesn't necessarily mean that. So anyway, this is a quick tip and I thought it was interesting that four or more seems to be the tipping point and I thought it was a good opportunity for us to do some summer cleaning and clean out our list of deal breakers, must haves, and uh, priorities maybe even just fix that list up a little bit and try to be a little bit more open about the people that we are willing to meet and get to know because sometimes we can surprise ourselves. Appreciate you stopping by for the quick tip. I'll look forward to seeing you back again soon. So please don't forget to subscribe, hit that ring bell. Oh, and if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do, please. It's Coffee with Carrie G. My last name initial had to be in there for some reason. Thanks for being here. And until next time, have a good one.